Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where I'll lead you step by step through the ABRSM Theory Grades. We're coming to the end of Theory Grade 2 now in this part of the series. So we'll be working through some revision exercises at the end of the book. If you want to grab your Music Theory and Practice Workbook, we'll be working on that very shortly. There are loads of resources available to help you on my website. If you go to SharonBill.com, you'll find the free PDF information sheets in US letter or A4 to accompany each step of this series. All the information that you need to complete this workbook is in that PDF. There's also a page with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials. You can also access information about the books that I have available there. If it is that you're working towards actually sitting the ABRSM Music Theory exam, I've written a book called How to Take Your ABRSM Music Theory Exam and it's full of tips and techniques of how to best prepare for that exam and also once you're in the exam room sitting that exam paper, how to best use the time available whilst you're sitting that exam paper. So if you go to SharonBill.com it's all there for you. If you can give me a like that would be fab, that would be very encouraging to me and if you subscribe to keep updated you'll be sure to know what's coming along in the pipeline next. There's loads available in store for you. I'm really enjoying working through this series and I hope that you're enjoying it too. I love music theory and I want that to be contagious. There's nothing better than getting behind the nuts and bolts of what makes music work. Work. And so let's move on to the revision exercise. If you turn at the back of your book to page 30, we're going to be looking at revision exercise 2. And I suggest that you use this as an opportunity to look up any of the information that you might have forgotten. Please bear in mind that this will also be using the information that you covered in grade 1 2. It's a um, Grade 1 also, that was a confusing sentence. Grade 1 also, as well as Grade 2. Um, it's an accumulative progression of knowledge, so it's always all of Grade 1 and now plus all of Grade 2. And so I'll just give you a few hints of where to look to find the information to help you to answer these questions. And so give the meaning of these following words and signs. So Lento you will find in Grade 1 section Q. You will also find the explanation for this here in one section Q. This word here, Dolce, you will find in grade two, section I. Also, you will find this, Molto Espra, there. I shan't give you any more clues to that. It's an abbreviation. Here, these symbols you will find in grade one, section Q. These symbols you will find in grade 2, section I. MP is in grade 1, section Q. Okay, this question, which bars have only notes belonging to the tonic triad? That refers to section uh, 1, grade 1, section O. Tick the box for any of the following time values that are not used in this melody. So you just need to keep your eyes peeled and if you're not sure what these note values look like, you can see it in grade 1, section F. They'll all be there for you. What is the interval between these the first two notes? You can find the information to help you answer that in grade 1 section N, it's also in grade 2, section G. Which other pairs of bars have the same rhythm as bars 1 and 2? So you just need to keep your eyes peeled there, that's a pair of glasses, I should perhaps explain that, look out. Draw a bracket over two notes next to each other that make the interval of an octave, so the intervals is grade 1, section N, or 2, section G again and then copy out from bar 9 to the end and it tells you exactly what to look out for it's literally just copying so you just need to keep your eyes peeled there in the exam just for copying accurately and neatly you can be awarded 10 marks should that come up in the exam paper so that's an absolute gift of a question and so I suggest that you press pause 
take your time and have a go working through that exercise. Please do try and attempt every question. doesn't matter if you get it wrong. You can always erase it and try again. We're only ever writing in pencil. And so then when you feel like you've done your best and you've had a go at that, reaccess into the video and I'll go through that with you. So I'm hoping that you've had a little go at this yourself and I'll just work through these and you can always look up to find the information if you're not sure um, what I'm saying there. So lento is the Italian term for slowly. This symbol here, it means that there are 66 crotchet beats per minute. Or if you use the terminology, you would say quarter notes, 66 quarter notes per minute. That's the tempo marking telling you how fast the pulse would be. Dolce means sweetly. I always remember that. I always think Dolce it looks a little bit like Dolly. Find some bizarre way to try and help you to remember these things and Dollies are very sweet. So just find some word associations to help you remember these different performance directions. This here, Molto Espr is short for molto espressivo. Molto is much, with much espressivo expression. So with much expression or very expressively. It's however you want to put your construction of the sentence together. So long as it's got much or greatly or something like that. With much expression is perhaps the best take on that. This symbol here, it's the symbol for crescendo. That came up in the last exercise. And it means gradually getting louder. Um, this is the exact opposite of it. So we can already guess that it means gradually getting quieter. And the Italian word for that is diminuendo. Diminuendo. There is another way of saying that, which is decrescendo. I don't particularly like that. I don't know, it just doesn't seem very sophisticated. It's like an uncrescendo. So decrescendo and diminuendo both mean the same, gradually getting quieter. These notes here are what I referred to as the tenuto marks and what they actually mean are it's a slight pressure, certainly not an accent, uh, and generally detached as well, they're separated. Okay, this next one, MP, it's actually short for mezzo piano which mezzo literally means middle or we'd say moderately and piano is quiet or I guess you could say soft. Which bars have only notes belonging to the tonic triad? Now this is a double barreled question in a sense before we can answer what the notes of the tonic triad are we first need to establish what the key is. And so let's just look at this piece of music. So we're now going to refer to this piece of music. And the clue we have is here in the key signature. There are no other clues here. So we've literally got this key signature to help us. And we've got an F sharp and a C sharp. And if you refer to grade one, L, you will find that that's D major, or also in grade one O, it will show you that key signature again. We know that we're in D major. And so now we know we're in D major, we can work out what the tonic triad is. So we know it's built of the first, the third, and the fifth notes of the scale. And so if we're in D major, one is D, E, F is three, G, a is 5 and so we're looking for a bar with D, F, A and no other notes at all. So let's look at that. So bar 2 
is just DFA. It could be in any order actually, so don't just presume it'll be in that order. could be any octave as well. We've got other notes here. Bar 4 is tonic triad DFA. Bar 6 is DFA. Now bar 8 is D only, but that still belongs to the tonic triad, so that still counts. Bar 10 is DFA, F sharp, the key signature takes care of that. And then also bar 12 is just got D in it, which of course still belongs to the tonic triad. So it may not be the complete tonic triad, but it certainly belongs to that tonic triad. And so we can say that it's bars... 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 and 12. Okay, let's move on. Tick the box for any of the following tan values that are not used in this melody. So just be careful to read the question. We don't want to know which ones are included, only the ones that are not. And so just to refresh your memory, this is what a semi brief or a whole note looks like. A minim has a stem or a half note. A crotchet is coloured in with a stem or a quarter note. A quaver or an eighth note has that kick or it can be beamed. And then a semi quaver has those two tails and can be beamed like that. And so we're looking for whatever is not in that. And if you just refer to the extract given to you, you'll see that there are only crotchets and quavers or quarter notes and half notes. There's nothing any shorter than that and there's nothing any longer than that. So there are no semi briefs or whole notes. There are no minims. There are definitely crotchets or quarter notes. There are definitely quavers or eighth notes, but there are no semi-quavers or sixteenth notes. Okay, pressing on. So what is the interval number only? They're not asked now this all of this means is they don't need to know whether it's melodic or harmonic. They just want to know the distance between the notes on the first two notes of the extract. So the first two notes are these two notes. Don't forget to count the bottom note as note one. So we got one, two, three, four. So it's the distance of four steps away. So we would say a fourth. Whether to ask as if it was melodic or harmonic, that interval is melodic because they come one after each other as if it's a melody. A harmonic interval is when they come together as if it's a chord, but they don't want to know that. They just want the number. Okay, this next one is just a matter of keeping your eyes peeled. Which other pairs of bars have the same rhythm as bars one to two? So you can tell that just at a glance. Bar one is all quavers or eighth notes and then we've got crotchet quaver quaver or quarter note eight eight. And so that's the pair of bars we're looking to be repeated. So bars three and four have that same pattern. All those two bars are the same as each other, they're not the same as that first pair that they've asked us. Now this next two bars does have the same rhythm. Each time the pitch is different but we can see we've got crotchet quaver quaver at the end or quarter eighth eight. These are the same as those two however we're not interested in that, we just want to compare to this first two bars. And so bars 11 to 12 are also. So if we're comparing to bars 1 and 2, we've got 3 to 4, 7 to 8, 11 to 12. 3 to 4, 7 to 8, 11 to 12. Next one, nearly at the end. Draw a bracket over two notes next to each other that make the interval of an octave. So we know an octave is an eighth or eight notes away. So we know we're looking for a next door notes that are quite a distance apart. We know just at a glance that these won't do because they're far too close. So one, two, three, four. We want a big jump. So here we've got a big jump that gives us the opportunity to think this could be it. So we've got from D all the way up eight steps to D. So, 
two notes next to each other that make the interval of an octave. It's only asked us to do that once, but we can always just be double, doubly short. It won't hurt to do extra. And so let's just mark out this next octave here. Either of those two will do. You might as well do both of them, just to be sure to gain maximum points. Okie dokie. Now, the last one is just a matter of copying out, but be careful that you copy the correct part. You could do an absolutely fabulous job and find out you've done the wrong bit and that won't award you the marks. So it says from bars nine to the end. Actually, in the exam, this question would be positioned so that the empty stave is right underneath the music that you're copying, so it would be a bit more convenient. In this case, we're going to have to just glance up to the top of the page. So I'm just going to quickly draw myself some bar lines. So we've got one, two, three, four bars to go. And it even tells us what to add. Add performance markings, but do not use a key signature. It's just so don't use a key signature because we're only going from bar nine, and so we're starting in the middle of a line, so this bit won't count. But it says write accidentals before the notes that we need to. So instead of having the key signature, we're going to have to add it next to the notes as they come along. So let's just get the notes in place. So we've got D, C, B, A, F, D, E, G, F, E, D, 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 and don't for, oh, don't lose marks by missing your last bar line. There we go. Let's get the stems in place. So we're just copying this. Shall I just position that a bit more carefully? And then all of these will be joined together. Because we're beginning and ending at the same point, it's just a straight line at the top. D, D, D. And so, just before we do the thinking, let's get all the copying out of the way. So bar 9 says MP. Then we've got a diminuendo marking. By all means, use a ruler. I'm just trying to be quick. We need also to make sure... We've got this legato marking. To make sure everything's accurate. And then we've got these tenuto lines here. And I think that's everything copied now. So now we've got the thinking bit to do. We had a key signature of F sharps and C sharp. So every time we see an F or a C, we need to sharpen it except if it's already occurred at the first part of the bar. Now the bar line cancels the sharp, if you remember, from your grade one, and so we need to reapply that F sharp here. If there was another F here, it wouldn't need sharpening again. The bar will carry that sharp until the end. The bar line then cancels it and we'd need to write it again. However, that's it, we've got to the end. And that's the end of the uh, revision exercise too. I hope that's been helpful to you. If you can give me a like, that'd be great. I'd really appreciate that. Subscribe to my channel to keep updated. There's loads more in store. I've got absolute reams in my head that we want to go through. I'm really enjoying this and I hope that it's a valuable resource and it's helpful to you. And please do visit SharonBill.com. There's lots there to help you, so please do access that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!